Right. Hello. Welcome to another book club. Um, I, for those who've never done one of these before, um, but welcome to your first book club. For those who've done a few, and I think I can recognise a couple of names. I think Arthur's in who who's done one with me before. I know. Um, da, 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 right. Yes. Um, so, what are we doing here? I've got the meeting chat, and I've got that. So what I'm going to do, so this today we're going to work through the first chapter of um, the book that we're working on, uh, which is this, Outstanding User Interfaces with Shiny. This is the first time we've run a book club on this particular book uh, with the R for Data Science um, community. We have previously run quite a few different Shiny related books so um the first one that we ran was mastering shiny which um is now in its fourth cohort i think um there have also been book clubs on the engineering production grade shiny applications thing that that you that, where they use column and and, and, a, and a few other things um we have done um javascript for r which had a, a large section on uh, interaction between javascript and shiny which kind of complements this book quite nicely um the reason we've done reason i mean i kind of picked the order that we did these things in because i because i was happy to uh, host the meetings um the reason we've done this last of, of those four books um, is that there's there's quite a bit of JavaScript, there's quite a bit of front-end technology involved with this book, even though it does introduce that technology as you go through the chapters. Um, I did think it was good for us to have worked through JavaScript for R and a couple of other things that are um, less focused on, less dependent on the, the, the that kind of background knowledge um but yeah it it does it is at pains to say that it will develop that the an understanding of, of, of javascript and, and css and stuff as you work through this book um right so anyways um my name's russ um and i've been a mentor with the R for data science community for a while um i should let you know that the book clubs that we run um, there'll be an hour once a week, um, and anyone can join, basically. If they're a member of the R for Data Science community, they'll be able to access the book club channel and, and use the Zoom link and things. If you'd rather not be on screen or, or, or something like that, if you'd rather not um, use your mic, um, I'm happy for you to ask questions through the meeting chat and things. But basically, what it, what what it boils down to is we're going to work through this book mo probably one chapter a week for quite a bit of this year um, because uh, there's 20 or so chapters in this book so it, it you know even working at one chapter a week um, it will fill half the year um, but I think the 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 gains that are possible from learning this kind of stuff as a shiny developer personally and probably as uh, uh, you, people who work with shiny out there i certainly recognize lucio and frederica and, and people who are doing shiny development um yeah the the, the techniques in here are, are, are quite useful to you though front-end technology moves at a pace that is far beyond that that r tends to move at certainly base R is one of the slowest moving of, of, of the languages because it tr strives to be backwards in, backwards compatible and things at every release and things like that. Um, the, the package ecosystem in R is, is a bit more, you know, um, fast moving, but the, the speed at which JavaScript, um, TypeScript and, and, and other front end technologies move on, it at, outstrips anything that happens in the R community. So um, 
there may be content in this book that is a little bit out of date as far as the, the front end technology is concerned, but I, I, I'm not an expert on the front end yet. And so that's why I'm kind of work, hoping to work through this. Um, the, the meetings will be recorded and put on YouTube so that anyone who misses a week or whatever um, can go onto the YouTube playlist and, and, and watch through. Um, you're welcome to ask any question you want in the Slack channel. Um, you can ping me or ping other members of the community if, if there are particular um, areas of interest that you share, feel free to chat away am amongst each other. In the meeting chat, you can talk to everyone in the room or to individuals if you if if you like. Um, I should state that you you have all you have all clicked to say that you will be um, polite and, and things like that. So any you never know what might happen. Any bullying or anything like that, let me know and I'll I'll, I'll deal with it. Whatever. I, I we have never experienced that in these book clubs, to, to my knowledge at least. Um, but anyway, I have to say that because it's you know the the community is extremely important to me. Um, the, so yes, the book club videos will go on YouTube. Um, so. You know, if if you're if you're nervous about appearing on YouTube, I I, I completely understand. Um, but it's um, it, 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 it's just a way of getting the content out there so that people can access it at a later stage and whatever. And it also advertises the community and things. And if you're watching on YouTube, but you aren't a member of the Alpha Data Science community. Feel free to join. There's a Slack link at the website, and um, I can I can add um, a link to that into the the video. Um, okay, so I'm Russ Hyde. I, I, I live in England, being a data scientist for a for a um, data science consultancy over here called Jumping Rivers. Um, how many people are in the room? Do you want to do a quick introduction to everyone? Or is that too many? Seven people in the room, that's probably all right. Um, so I'm going to throw the ball to Lucio, who's the first one on my list, at least. Um, if you'd like to introduce yourself. OK, uh, hi, Russ. Uh, nice to see you again. Uh, well, I study uh, mathematics. I am doing an undergraduate undergraduate degree right now in, in Latin America. Um, I've been into data science for the last two years. Okay, uh, Federica. Um... Yeah, hi. Hiya. Hi, hello. Uh, hi, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Federica Gazzelloni and I'm Italian. Um, um been um, joined this uh, community um and uh, be a facilitator for um two book clubs so i'm a statistician and interested in improving my knowledge uh in china thank you for doing this week. great um shell would you like to introduce yourself hey everyone um i hope i'm audible am i Hello. Hiya. Am I? Here? Yeah, we can. Sorry, we can hear you. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Michelle. Um, based in Nairobi, Kenya. I currently working as a shiny developer. Um, yeah, and I'm so excited to be part of this, uh, book club. My prayer is that I'll be able to keep up till the end. Um, mm. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. And uh, Trevin. Sorry, I don't, I don't recognize your name from, yeah, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hi, Russ. I'm Hi, yeah. Trevor Flickinger. Um, I was in the Advanced R book club with um, Arthur and Federica. Um, I am, I've been using R for a few years now. I work now as a data analyst and Shining developer for a homeless nonprofit 
in uh, Columbus, Ohio, in the U.S. Cool, cool. Um, Jack uh, Pensner, uh, I've spoken to a couple of times, but I, I don't uh, know at all from previous work. Yeah, um, so hi everyone, I'm Jack. I'm also in the, it's like, I guess in the group of mentors in Alpha DS. I'm a data scientist, like by trade for the past two years now. Um, I develop a bit, a few things in Shiny at work. Um, I'm currently working on quite a big project and I wouldn't say I'm that great at Shiny. So I'm here to learn a bit more. Um, get more involved with kind of like the the shiny community saying there's a lot of value in like picking other people's brains and uh joining in these book clubs and things and um, yeah nice to meet you all and looking forward to it great uh hi thanks um and finally arthur who uh i know from our last book club um would you like to say hello sure uh yeah i'm uh, arthur shaw um i've been dabbling with uh with shiny for a little bit and I'm just looking to kind of upgrade my my shiny skills and through this book also learn a little bit more about the the web technology that that undergirds uh, all the shiny thanks Great. right okay so I'll um, share my screen I've got um, a little bit of um, which one is it it would be that one I think yeah okay um, so uh, hopefully, can you can you see that now? Uh, you should yep. be able to see my R Studio session. Okay, cool. So if I, can I just check that if I pull over whoop, um, this, can you see my browser as well? Not no, yet. Uh, not we're yet. currently okay. on. I think just your R uh, screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I've probably shared the wrong thing. Just a second. I was going to ask uh, towards the start, Russ. You mentioned the um, is it JavaScript for R mm. or I can't which I can't remember which of the JavaScript books it was. But yeah, how much was, yeah. how much would you say that would be helpful to read alongside this? I um <laughs> uh, I I I think I, I don't know if it would help. If if you've never done any JavaScript before, I think you will probably be in the same position working through this book and working through that book. It it might be better to, you know, use something like the Mozilla um, notes to learn basic JavaScript mm -hmm. or, or or more kind of traditional JavaScript like um, online course or something, um, because. I mean, it is, it is again, it's about, um, as an R developer, how can you use JavaScript to, to you know, improve things like interactivity and, and, and stuff, mm -hmm. how you can use JavaScript visualization libraries within your Markdown documents or your Shiny apps or whatever. Um, it, it is quite, it is quite nice uh, in, ter in terms of the, the shiny specific content develops quite a bit of understanding of how um, inputs and outputs are, are linked from the front end to the back end and, and, and back. Um, I, to be honest, I think we to be working through the two at the same time. It, it I think it might possibly be be quite difficult to do. I mean, it would be possible, but I think it might dilute your um, um, attention span. Um, mm. But yeah, they're, they're kind of complementary books. Um, but there again, they're f coming from the R side. Maybe it'd be better to get some kind of traditional front end knowledge as as a better complement to this book. I think. Um, yeah, nice. And um, I guess it's kind of like don't learn Spanish and French at the same time or Spanish and Italian because <laughs> they're too similar. Like focus on one yeah. and maybe then do the other. Yeah, nice. 
hopefully they'll do that as a book club again. I, I do find these book clubs quite uh, e extremely useful myself as someone who like, I mean, I, I quite like the kind of continual learning thing anyway. Um, but I, f I find them a, a bit more of a kind of, be because it requires a bit more of a commitment from you. Um, I, I, the, the book clubs I find a, a good way to ensure that you actually work through a whole uh, book that you'd like to learn because I've got so many books where I've read the first four chapters and then started another book and worked through the first four chapters of that so it's quite nice to, to, to be with people who want to finish learning some something um, anyway I've, I've just checked. I, I do actually have a little preview thing that shows me what I'm, um, uh, what you lot can see. Um, so this is, I've got my R Studio up at the moment. Uh, hopefully you're all fluent with R and R Studio and things like that. If 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 any of you have come from a front end world and wanting to see how it links to um, R and data analysis and things, that that it it didn't sound like that from the introductions though. Um, but if any of you are uh, unfamiliar with this on YouTube or whatever. Um, yeah, we're working with our studio as a IDE, and um, uh, yeah, the, the 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 shiny applications will be written in the R console in here, and and I'll I'll show them up on the browser and, and things. Right. Um, anyway, so um, so this is these are like notes that we develop as a, a group while working through the, the, the books. Um, you only need to write some quite brief notes about what each chapter contains and the, the kinds of things that you're trying to learn in each chapter. Um, and they're there to kind of direct the um, group through a conversation about the content in that chapter. Um, Yes, there is a GitHub repo for this. Um, where is it now? Oh, maybe the link isn't in this page. Um, that, that, yeah, there's a GitHub repo that, that I've, I've pushed my content to. But each week, if you're working on something, you make a pull request against. If you need any help with that, do ping me in, in the R for Data Science Slack and I, I'm happy to help because I'll probably end up reviewing that any, anyway and, and merging the stuff. So um, I'm happy to help with that. Um, yeah, um, and the presentations will be recorded and put on YouTube. Right. So um, we've already got a few volunteers for the next few weeks, which is brilliant. Um, if anyone else wants to put their name down, there's a link in the Shiny Book Club, um, at the Shiny User Interface Book Club. Um, there will be a break in like three weeks' time because of daylight savings and summertime changes being slightly different around the world. But you know, it's it's better to start and get some momentum, I think, than to have waited another five weeks to start the thing. Um, okay, so the first chapter is called Shiny and the Web, and it's part of the, the kind of introductory block. The, there's five chapters at the start of this book um, that introduce um, Shiny and how it fits in a, 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 as like a kind of overall view within modern web technology. Um, so this it. it this particular chapter um, talks about um, a, a couple of bits of technology, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which are ex exceedingly common um, throughout web, you know, web applications and, and websites now. So we're going to talk about the purpose of those things, um, how shiny uh, can be used to create a web page or a web application, um, how you can use R to create HTML code or a web page itself, and how to add HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to a Shiny application. In one chapter, we can't cover 
that much content in particular depth. So we're going to gloss over a few things. There'll be some uh, stuff in here that maybe not the best practice nowadays, um, but uh, we, that, that, that's the aim of the chapter at least. Um, so you know a little bit about Shiny. Shiny is an R library, our package sorry, for developing web applications for, for so that a user can interact with uh, data, create their own visualizations, things like that. Um, and it's, the main purpose of Shiny is to create kind of interactive data uh, applications for, for, for users. Um, it, it was written so that a, a typical R developer who wouldn't necessarily have CSS skills and JavaScript skills and, and, and know much about HTML would be able to get um, one of those kind of interactive applications up and running in relatively little time uh, and without needing to know much of the, um, the underlying web technology. This book will teach us a little bit more about that underlying web technology and how our, how Shiny interacts with it, how it sits uh, upon that, that stuff. Um, OK, so the preamble, I'll talk about the book more generally. There is a, a GitHub repo that contains code examples from the book. Um, and you can install that using the remotes package um, and then load it up if, if, if you want. Um, so one of the examples that I'll show is like a, a kind of DJ uh, thing that, 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 that's shown as an example in the book, which is quite neat. Um, so the prerequisites here are you need to have a little bit of experience with Shiny. You don't need to have, I mean, I've been a Shiny developer for like two years. Um, you don't need a huge amount of experience with Shiny, but you do need to have created Shiny applications in the past and, and whatnot. You, you might not have added any custom CSS or custom JavaScript or anything, but it, the, the book does assume a, a certain level of um, knowledge of, of Shiny. Um, if you haven't learned much Shiny in the past, we do have Master in Shiny and, and, and other book clubs as well, which will help. Uh, um, Non-essential but, but useful is a bit of a background knowledge of, 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 of these different web technologies. And the purpose of the book is to help you make apps that have a more kind of professional look um, to be able to develop um, uh, widgets for, for in your application so that users can enter data or, or, or interact with the app in a, in, a, in a way that you can't currently do with the, um, the, 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 the kind of standard tooling that's available in Shiny. Um, you get to learn how to do JavaScript and CSS, how to handle that within a Shiny app and, and things, and how to develop apps that will work on a mobile as well as they will work on um, in a in a browser on a desktop or something, um, and also you will will see something of of how to interact with React, which is like a JavaScript um, framework for developing um, web applications. Okay, um, so we're on part one of the book, which is just putting shiny in context in the context of web technology right. okay um, so um, here we've got to make a web application as an R developer you um, learn R which hopefully you know a little bit at least um, learn how to use shiny and then you can make interactive web apps whereas the typical route for a web developer is to learn a bit of html then a bit of css and then a bit of javascript and maybe some front end libraries or something and make web applications for each so with a bit of html you can make a 
a kind of fixed page web, you know, a fixed web page. If you then learn a bit of CSS, you can work out how to kind of style different elements on that page, style uh, elements differently depending on whether the user's hovering on them or click or they've clicked them or something like that with a bit of javascript you can look you can develop a web page where values stored by the browser or, or presented by the browser responds to user input or, or and um yeah so so the r route to making web applications is kind of the reverse of the um um the typical route so you're basically learning how to use a package and then um you can make a web application but um so here we're gonna just load up shiny um so if i'm in here okay so shiny itself um so when when you generate a shiny uh application in order to run it you do something like shiny app ui server so these are two um a ui would be the how you encode the user interface the you know the content that's presented to the user the server is a function which defines how values change within your app in response to user input or uh, in, in response to changes in other values within the app and the connection so the server function runs in R on a server or something or maybe on your own computer um, the user interface is something that's presented by the browser to the to the user um, and um, so you have to know a little bit about how to transfer data. So you don't, what Shiny does is it hides from you how data is transferred from the server or from the computer to the browser and from the browser back to the, to the rest of your computer. Um, right, okay, so, but that user interface thing that you pass in to, to the shiny app function um, is basically is HTML. Um, so shiny itself is able to create HTML. Now HTML is like how you specify the content of the web and also how you specify the, the, the kind of context of, of those things. So the content being like the words and pictures and things like that on a, on a web page and the context is like for each of those elements you might tell you might define that um this is the title of the page this is um a paragraph this is an image and a hyperlink or something um right but we can use shiny itself to create HTML. So if you've never seen HTML, this is basically what it looks like. You have a tag, and then between the two tags, this is an opening tag and a closing tag, you have a value. So here, this is just, what this does in, in total is it creates a, a title element on a page that contains the text, hello world. Um, so that's a bit of HTML created by Shiny. Um, da, 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 Shiny generates HTML code. So we've just made HTML from R, um, and we can use we can we can write our own custom HTML using this kind of um, these kind of functions, or we can write CSS code for for styling an app, or JavaScript code for kind of custom reactive interactivity type stuff and make the, the that code available to the user's browser such that you know um, 
and and how that works is is magic at the moment um oh yeah and you can make use of loads of r packages and stuff that made that kind of content already available so r can write html and you can it, it incorporate html into your shiny app um there is a an application in the in the book that um if you look at it here so you define a user interface thing here so that's a bunch of kind of flat um where are we bunch of flat html so that's defining uh kind of blocks within the page um and when the user clicks some button that's labeled go um it will uh run this this application so in total that's 36 lines of, of shiny code and with that um if we run this i've already installed this package so this is a dependency of it but the the if i run this now the problem is i don't think the i don't think the sound will work for you but this is what that application ends up looking like so it depends on an r package that that that, that does quite a bit of work and there's also a bit of css code and a bit of javascript code and things like that that have been written custom, you know custom but all in all it's a couple of hundred lines of code and when the user kind of clicks on this i don't know whether it'll work for you oh, uh, that one sorry it it plays music um so um it, which is impressive um and i have no idea how they managed to get it to work like like that you know um at present um <laughs> but it's not the kind of app that i'll need to make for a while i don't think um can i zoom in a bit uh yeah sorry um ba -ba -ba -ba. let's have a see Right, so um, where was I? Here, yes, run that example. So that's a shiny app that does something that isn't within the, the typical remit for a, um, a, a shiny application. Typically, they're more data presentation, data analysis focused, but you know, it's an interesting example. Um, so what are we doing here via dj i think there's a little bit more in html yeah so um someone's asked a question in the uh, chat about html um so html is like a series of kind of nested elements you have um you might have a paragraph within which you've got a hyperlink and uh, some some associated text and an image or something all nested inside of each other um so officially it's hypertext markup language and it's basically how you specify the content that's presented on a web page but it's not just content so you also have uh, some kind of context for that so a typical tag a, a typical html element looks like this so you've got a, a p tag within which um, the, the content via paragraph would go. Um, and uh, you can add additional kind of attributes. So you might put some additional thing in there that, that, that indicates what color the text should be or something like that. Um, so there's contextual information can be added in these tag things and we'll show you how to do that a bit lower down in the page um, and we'll also show you how to do that within shiny how those kind of html attributes are added by shiny um, 
there are two different types of well there are many different ways of partitioning the different types of tags that you'd find in an html page so there are paired tags like this for, for a paragraph where you have an opening and a closing tag um, there are self-closing tags like this for images uh, where you put an opening one and, and you put img to indicate that that particular html element will be an image and within that you might put a source attribute and a, a kind of description of of, of the image um, this is self-closing so you don't need this kind of closing tag here um, also, you can partition them into the purpose of those tags. So there are some that define the structure of a web page, some that dis define the how to control, you know, sort of controlling elements on a web page, and, 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 and some that define kind of formatting the web page. There's something called the box model, which defines how different those different HTML elements are presented on the page. I forget the um, the uh, where are we? HTML basics. Is it tag attributes or is it earlier than that? I think it's HTML basics. I think is the section. Right. So these are different examples of the same thing. So these are different paired tags. Um, and um, this is basically the the box model. So there are um, different kinds of HTML elements, some that define blocks, and blocks are like a kind of an HTML that spans the whole width of, um, of whatever container they sit inside. So as you, if you looked in at the, the, the content for this uh, page, There'd be an element within which this sidebar is contained. There'd be an element within which this um, the, the the kind of content of the page is, is presented, and there'd be an element where this sidebar on the right is, is is specified. Within those containers, the the paragraphs here uh, might uh, sorry no not paragraphs. Um, say this image here might span the full width of the the, the 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 presented text so block elements span the full width of the container that they sit in um, inline elements um, inline elements don't span across the whole of a page so you can have um, uh, so an an a element is how you'd place a a URL hyperlink on a on a page, um, and they're they are inline elements. So if you had a paragraph within which you had a URL hyperlink, um, like say this figure one point two hyperlink here, um, that's inline. So it doesn't have to sit on its own line, and it doesn't span the whole the whole width of the container and you can put content before it and after it and and you can resize the page and it will refit you know it will fit the hyperlink in in the appropriate place um there are other types of elements called inline block elements now we'll learn a lot more about html as we go along and these are a kind of combination of the two so these are like um they're a way of putting um, a, a, a block element which fits the whole width nested in a particular line. Difficult to, to, to explain visually, explain in words, I guess. Um, but for us, the, I think the most important one, thing to know about is the block and the inline element. So here you've got in, in this picture, you've got a block element, the, the light blue thing that fits the whole width of the page. And within it, you've got three inline elements. 
those inline elements sit next to each other. If you resized, maybe one would have to go below the others, but um, but but you know if they if they all fit in place, just sit in the same line. Um, okay, right. Have I missed any questions? Okay, so uh, that's that, and um, the, 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 so that's flow. Yeah, uh, there are also elements that kind of convey a, a, a semantic purpose to to the content on an html page so um in the in the things we've seen so far i've shown you how to make um something that contains a paragraph of text um there's been an example that shows how to um uh, place image on a page and things these are kind of they have a kind of syntactic purpose they explain what kind of content they contain and, and what it would do what it should do the, the semantic meaning of something is like to describe um, describe to a developer what's the purpose of this section of code. So it's like, you know, if there's a, um, uh, which, what have I got here? So this website here, um so this might indicate to so this might be nested in a you know sidebar block or something like that that describes what the content contained within it what the purpose of that content is right anyway um there is so much more you could learn about html and there is a really good resource um which uh, I can open up, hold on, um, which I've probably used many times in these book clubs, um, on the Mozilla website. Um, so this is like, it, it basically describes how HTML works and what it's purpose for. Uh, and also, you know, some, some best practices for creating a static website with HTML. Those links are all in the, the course, the course notes, in the book club notes. Right, let's move on. Um, oh, hold on, was I supposed to talk about? No, here are the attributes. So um, here we've got a, um, a the div elements are, 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 are something that specifies where a, a, a block should sit in a in a web page um so that they span the the the, the block elements and span the whole width of a uh, whatever container they're in um this stuff here class equals awesome item and id equals this item these are attributes that you can add to an html element so if you, you don't need these things to be present you could have just had div at the opening and closing tags for that div element. But by adding this additional information, um, you can provide a way to find elements on a web page. Um, so um, if you wanted, you could find all elements on a web page that have the class awesome item. If you wanted to, you could find all the elements on a page, uh, sorry, the single elements on a page that has the ID, this item. Um, and you can actually make those kind of, th you can add those kind of things in, in, in your shiny code as well. And um, you know, the, the kind of input dollar um, pick a number in a, in a shiny application, that pick a number identifier is the same in Shiny as it is in the HTML page representing your um, your, your your application. Um, so these identifiers are quite useful if you want to find you know if you're writing interactive code that that is trying to pull values or interact with the the web page. 
Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so this is an HTML skeleton. So a typical web page looks like this. So you start with a kind of little header thing that explains what kind of document it is. Then you have an opening HTML tag that just indicates to the browser all the content you'll find within here is HTML content. Um, then you have two main elements. You have this head element and this body element. In the head, you might typically put things like, you know, loading in different scripts and things. Uh, you might put in, yeah, a title to so that, you know, search engines can classify your, your, your web page or whatever. Um, in the body, you put the, the kind of content of the page. So if we take this, put it in a HTML uh, file, and then open that file in the browser, it will display a paragraph that contains the, the words hello world. But we can actually make the same thing here using Shiny. So if we take this code here, we are able to make a, a div element that can, that's of this particular class and that contains this content, right? So it's quite similar. The, the paragraph element in the original HTML is nested inside a div. I can run a Shiny application with just that code. And then we'll, I'll open it in the browser because it's easy to inspect. Um, and if I bring that over here, right? Um, and we look at the source for this page, we see, maybe ignore the head for now. The body contains the same content that was printed out by this fluid page function call. So you've got a div of this particular class containing this paragraph. The head here has loads of scripts that Shiny is kind of loading up in, into your browser. Um, but that's one way of looking at that uh, um, the, the the output from Shiny there. Um, I might leave that up for now. Oh no, hold on, I'll need that in a minute. Okay. So we can generate a full web page just using Shiny. Um, I mean, the server is pretty trivial, so it's not going to do anything interesting, but it, you know, it displays the content that you want. Um, how does the browser understand that, um, the, the content that you send over to it though? Uh, it has something called the, there's something called the, the, the document object model, which is like a kind of computational representation of the app. It, store, it stores things like, you know, um, at this point in time, um, what, val what value is stored in this paragraph, what value is stored here, where, you know, and, and, and things like that. Uh, and we can actually open that same app and we can look at it in a bit more, in a bit more detail than just looking at the source code for it. So if we click inspect, in the browser, I'm using Chromium, but you'll get the same kind of thing in Firefox. Um, and we open the, the body. We can see that the content is contains hello world. We can actually edit that. And we can dynamically change the content that's presented by the browser. Um, so what I did there was I opened that app, I clicked inspect in my, uh, you know, I right clicked and then clicked inspect and that opened up this thing, the dev tools. Now we're going to 
find that dev tools panel extremely useful when we're working through this book you can look at things like um, any styles that have been applied to an element um, you can look at uh, things like um, what have we got here yeah so this is a style thing um, you can use the console here to run any code that you want in JavaScript if you, if you know how to write JavaScript. Um, you can actually find content from within the page by something like, what is it now? What's the element called? Yeah, so what that code did there was it searched through an object called document and the, the document object represents the web page, okay? You can get all elements that have a paragraph tag and that, since there's only one here, we, we were able to pull that out. If there were multiple, we'd get multiple things. So this is quite useful to, to like debug things in, in, in a page. Um, Right, so that's that. Um, and there's a couple of other little challenges um, that are mentioned in the book. So using that console, uh, sorry, using the um, inspector that I just opened, it's possible to add child elements like a different paragraph or an image or something like that inside another. Um, so you, you know, I've, I've done the bit that shows how to edit the paragraph text, but you can also add other things to a, a tag. So, is there anything else? Oh, there's a bit about CSS. I don't think I'll be able to go through this in 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 time because we're due to close in two minutes. Um, this is the first website that was ever published, and it doesn't look anything like the it well i mean it looks like what you would get if you opened a modern website um on a very slow internet connection so you'd get just the text to begin with and then after a while you'd get the css or the javascript code downloaded as well this is like the plain text version of of, of the uh the, the website so you see the links and stuff and you see the text content this was written in 1991 prior to you know five or six years prior to the introduction of css and javascript um, so it doesn't have the, the the niceties of a modern web page um, css is for styling your page you can add that using tags dollar style um, and we'll see in the second part of this book um, how to specify CSS, some tools that will simplify how to write CSS, um, and how to attach that styling code to your Shiny application. Um, here, uh, you can also add JavaScript stuff. So here, you might define some functions that are run when a user clicks. So what this code does, um, you start with a, a rather simple application that opens up um, and you have a paragraph that just shows hello world. When the user clicks on that paragraph, it will change the text color to green. And this is how you add JavaScript code that, that's responsible for that within your, your Shiny application. There, there are neat ways of doing it, but that this is a uh, getting you off the ground. How can I add JavaScript to a to a Shiny app type thing? Um, typically, you'd write it in a separate script and make that script available to the browser. Anyway, so that's a, a, a quick kind of run through 
of what you can do with a um, with JavaScript and CSS and things like that and HTML and how it links to shiny applications. When we opened that shiny app, the, the hello world thing, tons of additional things were, in, were, were, were loaded by the browser. So it loaded jQuery and Bootstrap and a, a, a shiny specific script. Um, and um, those things are, are responsible for making your app look like it does when when you open your shiny application and 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 yeah yeah we'll look into that kind of stuff in a bit more detail so that's ju just the introductory chapter um but hopefully it's kind of whetted your appetite for what can i do uh how can i make my application look a bit a bit different to every other shiny application um Okay, has there been any questions? Right, okay, cool. Um, yes, so the meetings are uh, one hour once a week. Um, so next week, I can't remember exactly who's talking, but someone's going to be doing the chapter two, which um, uh, is a little bit longer than chapter one. Um, and there's a section towards the end uh, Lucio is doing chapter two. There's a section towards the end that requires quite a bit of knowledge about CSS and, and how you select elements on the page, stuff that's beyond the stuff I've just covered. Um, and yeah, it might be it might be worth talking about that section when we come back to talk about CSS, the, the second part of the book. But um, yeah, anyway. Hopefully that's been useful. I think the book will be uh, will be quite interesting for a, a few of the the shiny developers in the room. Um, yeah. Anyway, if you have any questions, do do ask away. I know I kind of rabbit on when I've got <laughs> when I'm when I'm in the chair, but um, okay. Right. I'll stop sharing my page then. Okay, no problem, no problem. All right. Um, yeah, so um, hopefully I'll see you all next week. Um, do ask questions in the, the, the Slack channel and, and things like that. It's, it's really useful to get an idea of, you know, what people's ambitions are for, for the stuff that they might learn from this, what kind of stuff they're doing at the moment and how this could help and, and whatnot. Okay, cool. All right, anyway. I shall see you next week um, for that. See you then. Nice one. Cheers, Ross. See you. See you. Bye. Bye. See you later.